maximizing Gen AI. In a world where information is increasingly infinite and the power to manipulate it lies at your fingertips, how do you know what to focus on as an engineer or product builder? If you've ever asked yourself questions like, what can I and what should I do with LLM tech? How can I best utilize LLM tech for my engineering career and product development? And ultimately, where should I spend my time? If you've ever asked any question like this, you are asking the right questions. This is how you maximize your potential. It's all a question of prioritization. How can I best utilize this technology? What's the best way to use my time on this stuff? In this video, all we're doing is answering these questions. If you've ever asked yourself one of these questions, this video is for you. I wanna share a simple framework I've been using since the original launch of ChatGPT way back in November, 2022, seems like a decade ago. This framework has helped me focus on the pieces of this puzzle that are the most important for helping me create valuable assets. We're talking about code, we're talking about images, we're talking about text, we're talking about the collection of all of it put together. Gen AI is important for all of us in different ways. This framework comes down to breaking down information into four pieces so you can identify what matters most for you and your work. The most important thing is to get your hands on these four types of information. These four components of information make up what is the modern world and the modern web. As soon as you open your device, you are immediately interacting with one or more of these pieces of information, text, code, images, videos. So we all have access to these four key pieces of information, but what's changed is our ability to access and manipulate them thanks to the prompt. The LLM has completely changed how we, the composer, can interact with the modern pieces of information. And it's important to note, there are other subtypes of information like audio, and of course, there are many different types of structured text. We're focusing on the high level of information. So you are the composer, you are the orchestrator of the prompts, you're the orchestrator of prompt chains, AI agents, all the way up to full agentic workflows. But let's keep things abstract and simple. It is you controlling the prompt that allows you to query for the creation and manipulation of modern information as we know it today. And through your prompt, through your LLM, and through your tools, you're able to generate full complete results. So why is this diagram so important and how does it help us answer the question, what do we focus on? The prompt has given us unprecedented access and abilities to retrieve and manipulate the four key components of the digital world. That is the innovation. And this diagram, this framework, encapsulates those ideas in a single diagram. Let's go ahead and take you, let's run through a specific example, right? Let's take you and let's say you're a marketing specialist. So now we're in a domain, now we're actually looking at a specific use case within this framework. So now all of a sudden, when you're prompting, you care about different things, right? These four pieces of information, these four subgroups of information have a different value to you, right? You don't prioritize these the same, right? If you're a marketing specialist, you likely care about text the most or generating images or generating videos. All of a sudden with this framework, you can clearly see what piece of information is the most important for you and for your work and for your use case. As a marketing specialist, you're generating compelling copy, you're generating headlines, you're generating images to go along with those and of course video, but you don't really care about code so much, right? It's a, you know, it's it falls to the wayside for you. This is not what you're focused on. Let's go ahead and look at a common use case for you, right? You're likely a software engineer. And all of a sudden, the priorities of the types of information that we care about prompting, creating, manipulating, retrieving has completely changed. Go ahead, hit the like and the sub if you're understanding how this can help you make decisions about what to focus on. You can see here that through the lens of this framework, as a software engineer, the prompts and the tools and the workflows that you care about are going to help you unlock code. They're gonna help you generate text for documentation, for architecture. And then you're also gonna to wanna to be able to create images so that you can concisely diagram the architectures and the infrastructures that you're building out. And then likely you care least about videos, right? And not to say that there aren't times where, you know, creating a video of the tool or application you're building is very, very important. But out of all the things you can use the new incredible LLM technology for, uh, videos are 
of course, last place when it comes to your most valuable asset that you generate in your role. So this is how this framework works. This is how you can prioritize. And let's go ahead and just really push this into a single guiding question. When a new tool comes out, when Windows releases their you know, new Copilot Plus PC or when GBT5 drops or whenever something comes out, you can always look at it through this lens with this guiding question. What is the most valuable asset that you generate on a daily basis that you can use generative AI to maximize both the output quantity and quality of? It's really important to let this question sit and stir a little bit. This will help you know exactly what you need to focus on. What is your most valuable asset that you generate? So looking back at this example, right, as an engineer, our most valuable asset is our code. That is what makes us a software engineer. It's our ability to create clean, maintainable, you know, efficient or not so efficient code, right? This, this is our, our core valuable asset. Through this framework, now you can really ask yourself, my most valuable asset is code or it's text or it's images. Now, how can I use generative AI? How can I use this new tool, right? Whatever was just released, let's say, you know, you know, just recently GPT-4.0 just dropped. We had Gemini Flash come out. We can now look at all this stuff through the lens of our use case. And we can ask, you know, how can you use generative AI to maximize both your output quantity, and this is very important, and quality. Please do not lose your quality as you start to, you know, rapidly produce code or rapidly produce marketing copy or rapidly produce um, videos and, and images. Don't lose the quality. <laughs> um, this is a really important call out. Uh, don't just start crapping out crap because you can and you can do more and you think more is better. That is not um, how to succeed over the long term, right? You want to keep your quantity and your quality. Okay, so th that's it. Th th this question and in combination with the prioritization framework is how you can know concisely and confidently what to focus on, right? And we can kind of close it out with this final idea, this final concept, right? Take this framework with you right at the center. You are the most important piece of this. Your work, your use cases, your tools, your career. That's what this is all about. Never forget that. Might not feel like it, right? Just because on a day-to-day -day level, it can feel it can feel easy to feel really small with all this technology coming out. But remember that you and I and everyone on the channel, collectively as engineers and product builders, we are who they're making all this for, right? And then it hits the consumer base. With yourself at the middle of this technology, think about how you can utilize the insane innovation of the prompt and the LLM to generate your critical asset, whatever it might be, in its raw form, right? So think about how you can create, read, update, and delete your critical asset that is very likely to be one or more of these four key pieces of modern information. Truly everything that we see on a daily basis can be put into one of these four buckets. So think about how you can take these things, take this information and run prompts to generate one of these two outcomes, right? You should be running prompts that increase your economic output or increase your learning ability. I really wanted to focus on this. This probably deserves its own entire video, just talking about and discussing how we can use generative AI to help us learn faster than ever before. A while back, we put out a video called The Fisherman's Prompt, where we designed a prompt to help us learn really concisely. This speaks to the incredible ability we have now to retrieve, understand, and modify information faster and better than ever. And most importantly, ask questions in a zero judgment environment. It's really incredible how much that increases our learning ability rate. Take your domain, take your prompts, take your tools, and ask yourself the question, you know, how can I increase my quantity, quality, and rate of my primary asset, of my, you know, let's hop back to that, my most valuable asset because that will increase your economic output, which will in turn further your career, further your work, further your business. The key kind of KPIs to look at is quantity, quality, and rate. So increase the amount of code you can produce, increase the quality of the code, and increase the rate in which you can produce both high quality, high quantity code. I think it's really, really important, and I know we're gonna lose this as time goes on, right? We already have these weird 
deep fakes, we have voice cloning, we have all this stuff. You know, we have endless empty automated YouTube channels popping up. That's just one simple example. But this is going to become pervasive and really destroy, you know, the value of information over time. And it's going to be harder to really know what to look for, which which highlights the ability to use this incredible technology to filter out information. I think this is ultra important for, you know, using your learning ability to increase your economic output. We need to be able to filter out, specialize, and of course, increase our learning ability rate. And this framework helps you do that by knowing who you are, by knowing what your role is, right? Maybe you're putting on your engineering hat, or maybe you're putting on your dad hat. Maybe you're putting on your teacher hat, whatever it is, put the hat on and rethink about which one of these key components of information is most valuable to you and driving the creation and modification of the asset that matters the most to you, right? Your prompts go down, it generates one or more key pieces of information and up comes your generated result, text, code, images, video. Focus on the key pieces of information that make up your most valuable asset that you generate on a daily basis. You can use this generative AI prioritization framework to help you focus on what really matters for you and your work. And in turn, that will increase your economic output via quantity, quality, and rate. And of course, it will increase your learning ability by giving you the ability to filter, specialize, and increase the rate of your learning ability. That's the generative AI prioritization framework. This is what I use quite literally on a daily basis to help filter through information and focus on what matters most to me and my work. On the channel, we are hyper fixated on the road to agentic technology, the road to becoming agentic engineers. I'm really, really excited about a resource that I'm building for you, for the channel. A decent amount of the content on the channel pops off and then gets lost to time due to the way that the YouTube algorithm operates. I'm creating a new asset for us where we can discuss and learn and share information about becoming agentic engineers. I'm gonna share it first on the channel before it goes anywhere else. So if you're interested in how you can best utilize prompts, prompt chains, AI agents, all the way up the chain to full agentic workflows, hit the like, hit the sub. I'm really, really excited to share that with you. Big thanks to everyone who blew up the previous video. That was really timely and it's really too bad that OpenAI has shut down uh, the Sky Voice. I hope it comes back up. That was definitely one of my favorites too. I completely relate to a lot of the comments in that video. This is the road we're on. It's all about using the best tool for the job. Right now, by far, there is nothing more important to be focused on other than Gen AI, generative AI, LLMs, prompts, prompt chains, AI coding assistance. This is where we need to be spending our time as product builders, as software engineers. We're taking things one day at a time. We break down the releases of key LLM technology, and we always refocus it back to you, the engineer, the product builder, and at the end of all of it, our users. None of this stuff matters if we can't build valuable things with it, if we can't learn faster, if we can't increase our output. Use this framework, generate your prompts for your domain, query and manipulate the four key components of information that will then increase your economic output and your learning ability. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.